morning. Good morning. Welcome to Carson Valley United Methodist Church. I am your preacher today and also the pastor of this great congregation. Uh, I'd like to welcome you with open hearts, open doors, and open minds to uh, our church worship service uh, as we gather on the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. If you're familiar with the ordinary time uh, liturgical season, this is the longest liturgical season uh, that we are traveling in. Our worship series for this month is titled Walking with Jesus walking with Jesus, uh, and we're observing different angles of the struggles and also the, the benefits of walking with Jesus and also being called to serve as uh, our theme for today. Uh, but before we get started with our worship service, uh, we have some blue cards that were given to you with your bulletin. Uh, please fill them out and uh, drop them in the baskets at the exit doors right behind you. Uh, if you have any prayers or praises. We have some prayer and praise cards that are in your pew. Uh, please fill them out. Uh, just share what, how God has blessed you and your family, and also if God has blessed you here in his church family, please share that. It, it, is a, it is a living witness to us in prayer that we share it with each other in the presence of God, and then give them to me uh, during the birthday bank segment. Uh, today we have a, a great worship service planned for you tr uh, today, church family. We have a uh, performance from the, uh, we have an anthem uh, today that will be performed by, by the choir. And also we have the Sierra Ringers that will be performing our offertory today. And I can tell you, me and Al were blown away uh, today. So, um, but before we get uh, started on our song of gathering, I'd like to ask you to look at your neighbor and tell him good morning. As we center ourselves for our worship service, uh, today is what we call Consecration Sunday, and uh, it, it is a day that we are highlighting our stewardship campaign, and uh, uh, you'll hear from that later on in today's uh, worship service. And I'd like to ask you, uh, church family, to please stand if you're able as we sing our song of gathering, We Are Called.
Shall we pray? Great and wondrous Lord, we stand before you with great love and thanks in our hearts. We are blessed to live in this beautiful valley in peace and with health and fellowship. We know we live in difficult times, but your love for us is the rock we can cling to, to survive and to continue to grow in and with your church. In Christ Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Our reading today comes from the book of Mark, <clears throat> chapter 10, verses 35 through 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you, ask, what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are, our, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For our children's message, we have Nancy and her puppet friend. Okay, Murphy. Well, well, wait a minute, Murphy. What is that you have there? Oh, it's it's something to help me remember what to do. Oh, hi there. I'm Murphy. Um. Anyway, it's to help me remember what what to do. So it's like a to-do list. Well, not exactly. <clears throat> Okay, then, it, what do you mean not exactly? It, it, either it is or it isn't. Well, then, I guess it kind of is. Um, I, I, it, it, it's it's to, to tell, it goes along with what, what, the, what, 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 the, what the Bible reading was. Something in the Bible reading was like on a to-do list? Well, yeah, because Jesus said what we should do. Didn't you listen? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 okay, maybe you, uh, I better show you what it is. Uh, maybe that would be a good idea. I'll help you out a little bit here. And, and I'm going to read it because I don't think everybody can see it from where they are. Uh, okay. Um, do all... The, Murphy, would you like me to read it? Yeah, <laughs> we turtles read kind of slowly. <laughs> yeah, it's just because we're turtles, you know. Uh, all right, well, it looks kind of long. Um, okay, well, there it goes. Um, all right, here we go. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, 
at all the times you can to all the people you can as long as ever you can. Oh, that's really good, Murphy. That is, that is what Jesus said, right? That we should serve others? Yeah. Well, did you make that up yourself? <laughs> no. No, I, I'm, I'm a turtle. Yeah, well, I know, but no, I, I learned it in a, in a confirmation class I took a while back where, where they were talking about John Wesley. Uh, he was the founder of Methodism, you know. Oh, yeah, I'd heard that. Yeah, anyway, um, nobody really knows if, if he exactly said it like that, exactly those ways, in that wo those words, but he was always telling people that, that they were supposed to serve others like Jesus did and do to all the time and uh, all the place. Yeah, I know, we just read that. Oh, okay. Uh, but so, so, well, that's really good, Murphy, because that reminds us that Jesus did say we were supposed to serve and, and that we can serve... We all have gifts, so we can all serve, no matter who we are, how, how young or old or strong or weak we are, we can all serve, can't we? We can serve the other people. Yep, that's, that's what I said. All right, <laughs> let's pray. Loving God, thank you for the teachings and the example of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to serve others as Jesus served. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, every week we celebrate the blessings in our lives, whether it's a birthday, anniversary, or all types of blessings. It's hard to keep track. It just comes and goes, right? And we pay forward uh, to our birthday bank ministry, and it helps feed children around the world and fulfills the purposes of that ministry. If you have something that you want to celebrate in the presence of the church and also in the witness of God, uh, please come forward and also bring your prayer and praise cards with you. Well, thank you. Yes, yes. There you go. Um, my brother-in-law's birthday this month. All right, happy birthday to your brother-in-law. My sister's birthday this month. Happy birthday to your sister. And we're celebrating our, we celebrated our 47th wedding anniversary. Yeah. How do you do it? <laughs> I knew it because my husband's a saint. Yeah. <laughs> God bless him. Nah. Our grand, grand, granddaughter grandkids. Mm. Oh, they're here. Well, don't have too much fun. I need you for Tuesday. <laughs> okay, our son-in-law Jeremy's birthday and our uh, nephew Arthur. Oh. I got, thank you. Hello, I got one for my birthday coming up next Tuesday. All right. That'll be 92. 92. Oh. Happy birthday. Thank you. Wow. Niece and nephew that have birthdays this Happy birthday to your niece and nephew. Late, but I celebrated my 38th birthday on October 5th this month. Awesome. Wow. We're the same age. Give it there, 38. Yeah. <laughs> last, last week I was at my, last weekend, I was at my 40th college reunion. Wow. And I saw my best man for the first time in 25 years. Wow. Hey, I have two. Uh, this is for a John Sundrager. John Sundrager. Happy birthday. And uh, celebrating my birthday next Friday, Sunday, 85. Wow. Oh, happy birthday. I'm going to beat him to the punch. Last service, he bragged how his alma mater, Fresno State, beat UNR Sorry. by three points. But yes, they won. We yeah. offered him a free ticket to go, but it was too cold. Yeah. <laughs> Don't work harder, work smarter, people. <laughs> and this is in celebration. Uh, Tammy helped Denise and I and Ryan move him into his new house on Friday. Only took three hours. Oh. Wow. Right. Yeah. Oh, yes. 
I would like to say a prayer for this birthday bank. With the church's permission, please say aye. aye. All right, let me say prayer. Jehovah Jireh, you are the Lord that provides. Uh, you provide so many blessings for us. But with all the long lists of blessings you've given us, we can hardly keep track. But we give you the praise and we give you thanks, Lord. So we pay it forward to the birthday bank to help feed children around the world and fulfill the purposes of that ministry, Lord. We ask you to bless this birthday bank to remind us to keep on giving because you have given us your all. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are going into our tithes and offerings. Uh, we don't, oh, they're coming. Uh, we don't pass a basket around uh, if you're new here, but we do have a, a location that you can give to the church, and also we have a church website that you can give online. But we do offer a portion of our talents, and our offertory will be performed by the Sierra Ringers, titled Morning Has Broken.
get to hear that twice on Sundays when they're playing because I get to do liturgy. My wife has to be here early, so I get to be here early too. <laughs> Amazing ladies. Shall we pray? Lord, our tithes and gifts we place on your table as our part of your stewardship. As we grow and flourish, we are thankful for what you have bestowed upon us, and we pray that you will use them to keep our church and our faith strong. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Al. Uh, we are going into our, our prayers and praises. I will read the prayers that have been submitted to me, and I ask the church congregation to respond with, Lord, hear our prayers, after I have read the prayers. I will also read the praises submitted to me, and I ask the church congregation to respond with, we thank you, Lord, after I have read the praises. I'd like to ask Gwen to play a quick snippet to quiet our hearts and minds. First prayer, prayers for everyone who is anxious about hurricanes, floods, and upcoming elections. Keep the faith. It will be okay. Uh, prayers for Sharon Rhodes recovering from knee surgery. Uh, prayers for cousin David who has health issues uh, for a diagnosis. This is from Ann Robar. Uh, a prayer from Geraldine. Our prayers for her cousin Tom as he struggles and continues with speech and physical therapy after a stroke last February. Uh, prayer from Lynn Snyder for the for the Galvey family, Tony and Kim, and the passing of their son Ezra last <laughs> night in an auto accident. A prayer from Don Jardine. <laughs> A prayer request for Jessica Male, who is going to have surgery in renown for blood clots. <coughs> Prayers for my son and his walk with God. Prayers for Nancy Hollenbach, uh, who is in hospice and also has cancer spread to the, her back. A <coughs> uh, prayer from... Uh, Prayers for Connie Kenya, her cancer has returned. Prayers for, for the Walsh family as their uh, father uh, passed away to be in heaven. This is from the Mazas. Okay, like this is a, all right, I'll, this is challenging for my eyes. I'll try. Uh, this is a prayer from Rebecca Holt, prayers for healing for her friend Sherry, recovering from a knee replacement surgery. She is in a lot of pain. And also a prayer for her friend Jackie, whose white blood cell count is lower and her immune system is compromised. Very good. Oh, ah. <laughs> uh, a prayer from Robert. A prayer for my uh, cousin Brandon. And a prayer from Lynn uh, Lauren, for Lawrence John Knack, my son's father in law, who passed this morning, and the family. And these are our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, our praises have a, a praise from uh, Ben and Claudia for their granddaughter, uh, Deirdre, and husband, Luis, are visiting this weekend. Uh, have fun, Claudia. Hopefully I'll see you on Tuesday if you don't have too much fun. Uh, praise uh, from Susie. Yay, her, uh, sign ups for our craft fair chili lunch donations are complete. 
and many items have already been labeled and delivered to the church kitchen. We are thankful. Uh, and also a praise for me, if you notice, uh, along with all the other uh, volunteers and staff that we have here at church, we, we, have a, uh, we have a very great landscaper that's been cutting our church and also the parsonage. Uh, Robert, thank you, Robert, for doing all that since the spring and summer. We are, we are dialing down to the last few days of, of mowing because it's getting frozen outside. And I will be doing the mowing instead. It's going to be a snowblower so, on concrete. So um, also, I, uh, my other praises, as Len just announced, I was t- trying to do a nice one. My alma mater won yesterday, and I hate to poke the bear. Fresno State beat University of Nevada, Reno. And um, sorry, Len, I couldn't join you. I couldn't join you because I already knew it was going to be cold. But, And these are our praises. We thank you, Lord. Let me say a prayer for this Sunday. Oh, dear Lord, we are very thankful that you have led us to this 22nd Sunday of Pentecost. It is part of the liturgical season of ordinary time. It's a very long season, but we know that it will get more simple, it gets more uh, more easier when you are involved in our life. And we are very thankful for the prayers and praises submitted today, Lord. And we submit all of our requests to you so that you may do your will. And Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to be in our worship service and praise song and also the sermon to hear the gospel, to open our hearts, minds, and souls to do your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask the church congregation to please stand if you're able. As we sing the Lord's Prayer together. We have an anthem for you, my church family. It is going to be performed by the chancel choir, directed by Tammy Owens, titled, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. How come you can't find it?
Thank you, choir. Thank you, Tammy. And uh, continue prayers for your guys' voices. Uh, and as we glorify our Lord and praise in song. I'd like to acknowledge God in our presence, Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons in fellowship, blessed Trinity. I'd like to acknowledge our holy sanctuary. I'd like to acknowledge uh, church volunteers, our staff, and also you as attendees for our 1030 service. I'd like to acknowledge our YouTube viewers, wherever destination they are, whether they're in Europe or here in the valley. Uh, thank you for joining us online. I'd like to acknowledge our children and our youth who are the future and present of Carson Valley United Methodist Church. And I'd like to acknowledge you as visitors or friends that are joining us today. Thank you. Uh, I come to you as a servant of Jesus Christ with the gospel written by the Apostle Mark, chapter 10, uh, verses 35 to 45. That was read to you by Al. Thank you, Al, for reading that. Uh, but I'll be reading and also focusing on, uh, on a portion of today's scripture for this week's lectionary, which is Mark chapter 10, verse 45. And here are the words. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the Lord of our God will remain forever. I'd like to have a theme that I wanted to come to you uh, today in my church family, and that is titled, We Are Called to Serve. We Are Called to Serve. As we continue uh, on this worship series for this month of walking with Jesus, we have, we have discussed so many ways that we have understood our journey with Jesus. And that is, uh, from the last two weeks, we have discussed of receiving or, or how to receive the kingdom of God with walking with Jesus. And also the difficulties of following Jesus when we're walking with Jesus. But today our walk is a little bit different in which it's a more convicted and also more uh, towards a servitude or servanthood type of walk in this month's worship series. And it is a focusing on our call as United Methodists or as Christians to walk in a, with Jesus in serving as God's church. Now the Gospel of Mark, uh, from the beginning of this, of this worship series, the Gospel of Mark, if you are not familiar with it, it is, it is the shortest gospel that is in the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now Mark is a, is, is, is a YouTube clip. Uh, I always describe it. If you want to know how to fix a car or fix a garbage disposal, for example, um, YouTube is the reference for me. Um, if you don't want to read the whole book of Matthew or Luke or John, which are more than 16 uh, chapters, Mark is the, the shortest abstract of Jesus' life in a whole, in a whole book. And it, and it starts with, with Mark uh, focusing on Jesus' baptism, all the way to when he is crucified. And, it's, and if you just look, uh, you could read about um, Jesus uh, feeding the thousands, and then, and then all of a sudden you're, you're already at Calvary already. So it's, that's how fast it goes. It's a very three-minute clip of Jesus' life in a hole. Um, and so the most pivotal thing about the book of Mark, uh, for you and I, uh, my church family, is to understand that the book of Mark focuses on a lens that you and I uh, need to be familiar with when focusing on Mark because it was written during a time of persecution and a time of suffering for Christian followers. And it's a lens that is described as the suffering servant, the suffering servant. It is an aspect through the lens that describes Jesus as an individual that was sent not to gain power, or to overrun the current authority in that time, or in our time, but it is to create a bridge. Jesus 
was to create himself. He was the bridge himself to unite all creation with God. And it had to do with suffering. He had to suffer when he was born, when he was alive, walking on this earth, and he suffered on the cross all the way to the last breath of his life. Another aspect we can observe is considering God's presence is not only all-powerful, all-present, and all-knowing, God is also all-enduring. God not only knows our pain, he not only knows our suffering, but God suffers with us. And the example of suffering with us is suffering with his only begotten son on the cross. In today's gospel, the brothers James and John of Zebedee, they put a very ambitious request. It's very, very ambitious. And they request Jesus to Jesus, asking him, Teacher, we want, to, we want you to do for us of what we ask for you. And then Jesus asked them, like, what can I do for you, John and James? And Jesus, and then John and James ask him, grant us to sit at your right and your left side. Now, this is very symbolic, my church family, uh, that if you were to sit at a right or left-hand side of a ruling king or a ruler, that, that, that prescribes you that you are part of that same, you are equal to the person that's sitting in that ruling chair. Now Jesus tells them uh, and asks them this question, are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized, the baptism that I am baptized in? And Jesus is pretty much telling them, are you ready for this responsibility? If you were to sit on my right or my left side, are you ready for the responsibility that comes with who I am as God's son? That there have been individuals already destined to sit on my right and left side? Are you ready, if you are to be chosen to sit on my side, to, to hold the responsibility that God has bestowed upon my shoulder? Now in verse uh, 41 to 43, Jesus tells his disciples that the Gentiles worship their leaders. We already know um, that as in, in, back in... in times of the Roman, the Roman and also the Greeks, they worshipped their leaders uh, through historical times as gods. And Jesus is telling them that the Gentiles worship their leaders and they, and, they, and they worship them to a point where they want them to take over their whole life. And, and it gives them a sense of power and a sense of authority, these, these ruling figures of how much that they have under their hands. That greatness is on the ruling and oppressing and also taking as a ruling figure. Now, Jesus tells his disciples that this is not what a leader or greatness resembles in verses 44 to 45. That greatness is conceived through servitude and laying their life for their brethren, as it says in verse 45, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for, for many. And this is our key verse. The difference of what Mark is trying to tell us of Jesus and all the rulers in the world is that those rulers cannot do what Jesus has done, to give his life for the whole world. And this... Uh, goes on to, uh, to my breakdown of my sermon for today. I want to have a conversation on the attitude to serve and also living as a servant of God. Now, the author Mark Twain um, said one of my favorite quotes, and it's, uh, it is a, a quote that speaks in to serving one another as human beings. The best way to cheer yourself up is to try to cheer someone else up. Twain uh, relays a very important aspect of servitude that it promotes, it promotes a renewal of happiness among us as human beings who assist, help, or advocate for one another. It renews our soul. When you help out somebody, I don't know if you've ever felt this, my church family, 
But like when you help somebody, it also it renews your energy. It gives you a, a great type of spiritual stamina to keep on doing and paying it forward to the other. And you're also you're being a light to that person that you are helping out. Now in today's gospel, James and John, they request a favor from Jesus Christ to have them sit at his right and his left hand side when he is in his glory. They wanted power. They wanted recognition. They wanted what the other rulers had. And they believed that Jesus was this king. So if Jesus was to be king, I want to be part of that power. They wanted the, the same glory that Christ is blessed with as theirs. I don't know about you, my church family, but we all have that friend or a family member that is constantly shooting beyond the stars to get towards a goal. That they will do whatever it takes to be in a position of power or recognition. Uh, I, I like to go into a story. Let me tell you a story. Okay. I remember in my younger years uh, playing in high school football. It's always going to be around football, everyone. <laughs> okay. We had a rival called Cottonwood High School. I went to high school in Utah. And uh, I, I believe that um, in what the coaches were educating me on in this rivalry, we played it in a rivalry every year for the last, for, for the first, for the four years of high school that I was in Utah, and, and we were playing for the Liberty Bell. It was a small town rivalry, but it was, the game was packed. You had vendors everywhere, you had blocks, you had, we had a two block radius shut down, and it was a very personal game. It was, they used to call it, it was a game between the Presbyterians and the Mormons. And because Cottonwood High School was dominantly a Presbyterian neighborhood, because they had three Presbyterian churches within that square radius of a one mile radius. And also, we were, I went to a Mormon high school, which, uh, which a lot of the Brigham Young, Young's family members lived at. So it was the Mormons versus the Presbyterians, for example. And not only was it a small town, small town rivalry, but it was a religious war <laughs> that I had to put on my back. Coming from California, where it's very, very liberal, to a very conservative state of Mormon versus Presbyterian football. But here it is. Let me give you a... When I was... When this game, annually, I looked forward to it. Not only was it a time for me to gain my glory on the field of, of sacks and also tackles, opening gaps, but I did whatever it took knowing my attitude and knowing uh, how my, my type of programming mentally was, that whatever the coach told me to do, I would do it. The coach told me to step on that hand, step on that hand. And then if the coach told me to do this, even though my mom told me this, <laughs> I would listen to my coach. I was that type of person. I did whatever it took to get my glory. I did whatever it took to say yes. It was a glorious day. We won all four years. There were stretchers, ambulance, <laughs> everywhere. It was a very personal game. But it was a glorious, but only in that very moment. What Jesus is preaching in today's gospel is that every recognition or time of glory we have on earth does not compare to the glory that is eternal in heaven. That any type of glory, power, or recognition we have is on a timely basis. Kings come and go. Queens come and go. Rulers come and go. In today's key verse, he brings up a word which is called serve. God, the Greek word for, for serve is diakoneo. Diakoneo means caring for the needs of others as the Lord guides you in an active or practical way. Now I need you to look at your neighbor, okay? Look at your neighbor and, and, and give him a, a little smile, okay? And say these words, neighbor! neighbor. Oh, neighbor, neighbor, I'm at your service. Mm. That sounds like Sonic, you know, when you go order the hamburger. I'm at your service, okay? Now, Jesus was, Jesus was teaching his disciples 
that greatness is not measured on how much you own or rule or have power over. Greatness is a life that offers a part of yourself for the benefit of others. It is not a race to see who can please God in your talents and gifts. It is a walk, one day at a time, to draw all people to the kingdom of God through your life of service. Whether it is serving or volunteering here at church or somewhere around here, or, or contributing to the betterment of our communities in what groups you are part of, our lives as followers of Jesus Christ is not seeking our own glory for what we do. It is bringing Christ into our communities, our homes, and the world because greatness is in the hands of God. The attitude of, of a servant is to tend to the needs and surroundings of the world. And, it, and, it, and to tend it, it comes from a word that is from this week's psalm. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. A church family, in a, we live in a time where there are not enough servants, but so many rulers. When we focus on servants, like, it, it's like so low. We think of servants as being, as being lowborn, for example. But the servant of Jesus is giving up a part of you to lift up your neighbor. And it's doing it vice versa. We have, there, there are not enough servants, but so many rulers. We live among people who want to be in positions of power and have authority over others. But they do not want to pull up their neighbor up with them. For generations, we have witnessed in our nation and across the world that human beings lack one thing that could probably save this world, and that is to serve one another. That is probably that can save the world, to look and to serve one another, no matter what difference you have. This is what makes Jesus Christ unique, for he had disciples of different personalities. He had different people being brought to him, but his act of servitude redeemed this world to know mercy, love, patience, and obedience onto the depths of Calvary teaching you and I to be servants to one another in this world. This world cries in hunger, it yearns for direction, and it thirsts for peace. The question is my church family, will you continue as you are as Christ's followers to drink the cup of servitude? Will you continue to live a life in service as United Methodists? Will you be a light to the community and continue to build God's kingdom in our church community? Will you answer the call of service? My, my church family, find your greatness in Christ to serve the world. Then it goes into my second part of my, uh, my sermon, and that is living as a servant of God. The Apostle Isaiah describes the life of a suffering servant um, in these words, and, he, and it's going towards the description of Christ. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our unique iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by bruises we are healed. Now, church family, I need you to look at your neighbor one more time. I promise, one more time, okay? Say these words, say, neighbor! Oh, neighbor, neighbor. It's, all it's all for Jesus. Okay. Now, today, we are celebrating our stewardship campaign, and this is, today is what we call Consecration Sunday. We celebrate our stewardship campaign, con continuing our life and service through the teachings of Jesus Christ. I wanted to thank you uh, for your continued commitment to serving our communities here at Carson Valley United Methodist Church, here in Gardnerville and the Valley and also around the world. This church is a pillar of faith, not only here where you live, but also across the world. Whatever, whatever you bring to the table to offer to this world, it makes an impact, whether it's through this church, through the branches, our humanitarian relief, 
or also to all the different ministries, your love and support of Carson Valley United Methodist Church is all in that in a bundle. Living as a servant of God is knowing that we are children of God. As you continue your walk with Jesus as servants of God's visible church, let us work together as laity and clergy in seeing how we can continue to serve our community in Gardnerville and the Valley. Let us not just concentrate on our own communities, but for all communities, no matter what race, ethnic background, gender, or sexuality. Let us be God's children to serve God's children. This world awaits you, it awaits its stewards to serve its purposes. Will you continue to drink the cup of servitude that Christ also drank to draw all people to God? For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask the church congregation to please stand if you're able. As we sing our closing hymn, they all know we are Christians by our love. some reminders. Wow. <laughs> uh, flowers today are in celebration of Nancy and uh, Gary Dice's 47th anniversary. Uh, uh, thank you for the harvest of Thanksgiving for all those that brought stuff to the altar. Thank you so much. Uh, join the United Women's and Faith's Heavenly Holiday Craft Team uh, every Monday. 9.30 to noon, all are welcome. All completed crafts are due Monday, October 28th. Uh, silent auction, donations needed, experiences, timeshare tickets, items value over $50. Uh, talk with Nancy Dice or Sharon Holzer Day. Bakers, cinnamon roll, and candy makers needed for Heavenly Holiday Fair, November 2nd. Sign up in the fellowship hall. Items for raffle basket, baskets needed for Heavenly Holiday Fair. Talk with Jen Pullman or Linda Kozak. The Heavenly Holiday Fair kitchen crew need our help. Sign up in the fellowship hall uh, to bring ingredients for chili lunch at the Heavenly Holiday Fair. There is a theme here. <laughs> yes. 
Hurricane Helene. So, uh, if you'd like to donate to the Hurricane Relief Fund, please uh, make your checks out to the church, Carson Valley United Methodist Church. Mark in the memo, Hurricane. Uh, if you're giving cash, you can put it in an envelope, also mark it Hurricane. We're going to collect through the next two Sundays, and then all the things that we've gathered, we'll send one big check into UMCOR. Thank you for helping out others. Thank you. And we are doing our makeup photos today and next Sunday. Kevin and Becca will be in there. Well, Becca will be there soon, but Kevin's in the conference room right now, so go in and get your picture taken if you haven't done it already. And again, they'll be here next Sunday as well. Come fill your cup. Bible study Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. Blind Dog Coffee and Mint. It used to be 88 Cups, but they changed the name. So this is a change because when 88 Cups closed, they were meeting here, but now they're meeting back at Blind Dog Coffee. Check it out. Uh, Fall Harvest Potluck Sunday, November 17th, following the second service. Turkey and ham provided by the Member Care Committee. Please sign up in the lobby by November 10th. Uh, and the youth, youth group, group is yes. now going to start meeting every Wednesday in mm -hmm. November. Yeah. It was the youth that requested it. That is awesome. <laughs> Let me say benediction for you. Beloved, go today in the blessings of Jesus Christ, who challenges us to share our love through service and receive love through the service of others, binding us together as a community through holy interdependence. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen.